YouTube, it's Grace, and in this video I'll be showing you how I turned a photo I took into a pixel painting. For context, about three weeks ago I went to Chicago and I saw Last Dinosaurs perform, and they are one of my favorite bands, and it was so cool. And I was kind of nervous about bringing my camera in, but they scanned me with the metal detector thingy and no one said anything, so... I got some very cool pictures to say the least and I am super happy with how they turned out and the lighting in the venue was so cool and that kind of just inspired me to turn one of them into a painting I guess. This is the original photo that I took during the concert and this is the reference that I made. And this grid is 53 across and 71 tall. And then my canvas here that I'll be using is 12 inches by 16. And just for simplicity, I converted the inches into centimeters. So we are going 30 centimeters across, 40 centimeters tall. And I used a little bit of math and this is the size of each pixel. I realized right away that doing an odd number would be kind of hard to divide out, so I ended up making it 52 by 72 instead of 53 by 71, and I'll just have to deal with it. But now I'm just going to use a ruler and connect all of these lines. Now that the grid is done, I'm just going to go over it with a thin layer of white primer and this just makes sure that when I add the actual colored paint on top that the pencil won't smear. Now I just need to let this dry and I can get started on the paint. I'm going to start by doing the blacks at the bottom and then in the top corner. So I started by opening it up in a photo editor and then just turning the exposure up really high so that I could see clearly like where the black starts and stops. And then I just made an outline and now I'm going to fill all that in. Next I'm doing the pink in the top right, so I mixed this color and I did the outline same as before and now I'm just going to fill that in. Next I'll be blending the black in the corner with a really dark blue and I'm just doing the same thing as before, I bumped up the exposure a lot just so that I could tell where the colors begin and end. And a slightly lighter blue. I'm aware that these colors are definitely not perfect right now, but I'm just going to wait until I have everything blocked out and then I'll go in and fix the colors and add lots of details. I'm gonna do this sort of dark maroonish color next and then I think I'm gonna mix it with the pink just to make like a transition color to blend these better. This is the transition color I ended up mixing just by mixing equal parts of these two. And so now I'm just going to fill this in here. I think I'm also going to use this color for the mic stand. I just mix this kind of light purple to blend out the pink and the blue and then also blend out throughout this area. On my phone, it looks a lot more blue than it is, but there is a decent amount of purple in that picture. And just for now, for the light purple here, I'm going to be using this. Next, I'll be going in with a really light orange to try and mark out some of the highlights. For the very lightest parts of this painting, I'll just be using white, and this is how we're looking so far. Before I forget to add this, I'm going to go ahead and do the very lightest shade of purple. Now I'm going to start off with this color and I'll use that to sort of fill in around the guitar. I just marked out a bunch more pixels that I can use the light pink to fill in for and once those are filled in, I think I'm going to be pretty close to done with the first coat. Next is this magenta color, which I just mixed with these two. And just for the first coat, I'll use that same color to fill in the light purples here. 
working on the mic stand now. So for that, I'm just using black and a super dark purple. Now I'm mixing a bluish purple so that I can blend out between the pink and the blue. So I used a really light orange for some of the highlights, but some of them are more of a darker orange. So I think I'm just going to fill them in with this. I'm also adding a cooler pink, just to add some different shades like you see in the reference. Next on my list is a very light yellow and a very light pink, which I've mixed here, and I'm just starting to block those out. just finished filling in the last pixels for the first coat of paint, so I'm happy to say that the hard part is done. This painting definitely has a long ways to go, but I can actually kind of see the resemblance between it and the reference, so I'm really excited to see how it'll look after the second coat. Now that the first coat is dry, I get to move on to the second, which basically just means uh, going in and making some corrections to the colors and then adding another layer because the paint still is pretty thin. This is the second coat officially done. As you can see, the paint is a lot thicker. You can't see the canvas through it anymore. So I am really happy with this. But the next part is really what's going to bring everything together. So I'm gonna start by blending all of the background colors. First, I'm doing the black and the dark blue. So I just mixed equal parts of them together and now I'm going to blend them in. Now that I have this middle color down, I'm actually going to divide it into two and then mix half of it with black and half of it with blue to blend out the middle color. Now that this top corner is done, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the dark blue and the light blue. Then doing the same thing as before, I'm taking this middle color and dividing it into two and making one lighter and one darker. Not only did I use those lighter blues to blend out, but I also used them to add some detail in on this side. But I think this looks pretty good for now, so I'm going to move on to the light blue and the purple. The color difference between the light blue and the light purple wasn't super noticeable, so I didn't end up making other colors because I feel like that looks pretty good by itself. However though, these two colors here are definitely going to take a long time to blend. I ended up having to mix several different shades to blend these two colors, but I think they look a million times better now. Next I'll be blending the dark maroon with the light maroon, and then the dark maroon with the black all the way across the bottom. I think this looks pretty good now, so I'm going to move on to blending the dark maroon with the dark blue and the light blue. So I got this blended pretty well, and I also did a little bit of blending off camera. I did these two colors here, um, and now I'm working on doing the purple a little bit more and then just bringing it further down. Now that this part is blended, I'm working on fixing the pinks and purples in this section here because they don't quite look like the reference. My goal with these paintings is not for them to look exactly like the reference, but I do want them to be pretty close. Even though this part of the painting process is very tedious, it's actually one of my favorite parts just because of how much it changes the way the painting looks. Like the more colors I add, the better it looks, and the more layers I add, the cleaner my lines get. I think at this point, I'm pretty close to done. Here it is compared to the reference. I'm gonna let everything dry and then maybe add a couple more details, but I will see you once it's completely done. 
This is the finished painting. I am so obsessed with how it turned out. I think it's so cool. And I think the filming process of this video was a little bit deceiving because I definitely spent a lot longer on it than I let on. Like a good two hours every day for a week straight. And then the past couple days, it was like five or six hours and I'm exhausted, <laughs> but it's done now. So I can relax. <laughs> for like a day until I get more inspiration and immediately start another project. <laughs> I'm also thinking about making some more original paintings over the next few months, kind of based on other photos I've taken and maybe doing prints of them. So if you're interested in that, it's definitely in the idea book. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any suggestions for other videos or paintings that you want me to make in the future, comment down below or DM me on Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, if you would like to commission me or see any of the other art that I make. This is my handle. I post on there all the time. I'm also going to try to start posting a little bit more regularly on YouTube just because I feel like I can go a lot more in depth with my videos and make more tutorials a lot better than I can in like a 30 second TikTok. For my next video, I think I'm going to do sort of a tutorial of how I make like the Minecraft inspired jewelry type stuff because a lot of people on TikTok want to know how, but I can't really explain it that fast. <laughs> so if you want to learn how I do that, then uh, stay tuned until next week. But until then, bye. <laughs>